Hall. We're in yeah, County know. Durham, the Ramside Hall. Just the beast from the east is the just about to strike. We've got bit, snow, bit snow outside out on the golf course. Just explain what we're doing up here. Yeah, last night it was the um, Northeast uh, Football Writers Association annual awards night um, where they give out uh, Player of the Year, Young Player of the Year, a variety of awards, five or six awards. Um, really good turnout, actually. You have to pay tribute to um, Colin Young, um, who... Uh, works his socks off and getting the, uh, the the dinner together here at the Ramside Hall in uh, in Durham. Um, really good night actually, a really good representation across the board. Rafa Benitez was here, Jamal Lascelles was here as um, Player of the Year. Unfortunately Matt Ritchie, who was Joint Player of the Year, um, couldn't make it, he was under doctor's orders. Um, but also a good turnout from all the other North East clubs, especially um, a special uh, mention I think to uh, Jermaine Defoe. I think yes. we were all really moved last night. Um, Jermaine received uh, a special FWA award for his work in the community, but most specifically with um, his special relationship with Bradley Lowry, who unfortunately, as we know, passed away uh, last year. Um, but you could see, couldn't you, from the from he got a standing ovation, yeah. Jermaine, um, and he talked with such great um, depth of feeling. Uh, you know, this is a this is a, a, a footballer who has helped, albeit for only a short amount of time. Um, transform uh, a young child's life who had been up to that age suffering um, and I think uh, Jermaine uh, received the um, award from um, from Bradley's mum uh, and you can see what it meant to the whole Lowry family to, to have somebody like Jermaine just a little ray of light I guess on, on, yeah. on Bradley's life yeah, yeah. And, and Jordan Pickford even though he's now at Everton exactly he, came over, he, came the young he was the young player of the year yeah he was in he was in good form um, uh, he seemed to be enjoying life. Um, uh, I think it, it says a lot that um, he will come back from uh, from Merseyside and in, in to receive award for recognition of what he did for Sunderland. I know it was a poor season for Sunderland last year, and uh, it's not been a great one so far this year, this season, has it? But uh, but but Jordan was yeah, it was it, it was good to see good to see him uh, and you touch uh, on Sunderland. Chris Coleman was here as well, but Chris obviously there, yeah. he's got a tough job, hasn't he? Yeah. I think it looks, you know, I, th I think he's, he's walked into a job there and I can understand why he took it. Um, I think he wanted to get back into club football. He, I think he'd probably taken Wales to his mind as far as they could go. Um, remember what they did in the European Championships, magnificent. Um, was he going to be able to do anything better? Well, you know, failure to qualify for the World Cup probably underlines why it was the right decision to uh, to walk away. But yeah, it's a, it's a tough job. They've all got to, they've all got to, Tough jobs up here in the northeast. Rafa, you know, uh, in the middle of a run. I think they've only lost one or two in ten or something like that. Um, yet they're, Newcastle are still in a relegation yeah. fight. Right, as a lot of teams are. Yeah, you know, so. absolutely. Now, big story or the big game of the day yesterday really was uh, the cup final, Carabao Cup final. Yeah. Man City comfortable winners. Was mm. it? Was it Pep's brilliance or was it, as a lot of people said, Abysmal well, I, I think it's a. I think the newspapers today are a, are, um, a mixture of both. There was that that picture um, is taken from a sky grab actually. Uh, it's on the front page of the Mail's um, the verdict, um, and it was in the middle of Gary Neville. Gary Neville's rant. I, I, I have to say, I was astonished, and not because it was out of place, because <clears throat> but I was a, a, astonished at the vitriol. But I have to say, it was as cold and forensic a rant as you will hear he absolutely yeah. took Arsenal apart he took apart Xhaka, Will, uh, Ramsey um, a variety of people he said he, you know the, the quote there on the front of the uh, of the mail is right Arsenal are a disgrace spineless just look at just look at the kid crying that's what you cause and he was talking about players being a disgrace walking on a football pitch when they should be chasing a game. And afterwards, Arsene Wenger in his press conference said, oh, it's very easy for television pundits. They didn't always give their everything in a game. I think that's a really tough accusation to throw against Gary Neville. Yes, for, for, he, for whatever Gary was on the pitch, he never gave less than 100% for um, Manchester United um, or England. And it's a, it's a mixture um, in the newspapers of, of, of that, that kind of balance. How bad were Arsenal? How good were Manchester City? I think Manchester City um, may have been quite surprised that probably they only had to be about 85-90% mm. as good as they normally are to beat Arsenal and to beat Arsenal 3-0 comfortably. And that's a, that's a point that um, Henry Winter takes up, uh, one of our members obviously, one of our leading members, um, takes up in his Times match report. Um, 
and that's it. You know, it's a combination of um, City and Pep Guardiola being good and Arsenal being poor. Time up for Wenger, um, as as the headline says. And I, I think it is that balance. I have to say, take nothing away from City. However bad Arsenal were, and they were atrocious, take nothing away from City. They were splendid yesterday. And I think at times um, they, they, they just they certainly played Arsenal off the park. But I thought it was really um, quite fitting that the first um, trophy of Pep Guardiola's career is almost a throwback to the start of when Manchester City, yep. or the, when the Revo Manchester City revolution started. It was you know uh, under Mark Hughes and, and then Roberto Mancini. But the goal scorers yesterday, Aguero, company, David Silva, have all been there for the long haul. They're not the I say Johnny come like these, but they're not the new yeah. breed. They're not. They're not Pep's. <clears throat> they're not Pep signing. They've been the backbone of the of the of the Manchester City team, the successful Manchester City teams, you know, for a long time now. I mean, Aguero is on 199 goals for City, which is astonishing. Never made the Premier League well, the player of the year, team of the year. He's never made the Premier League um, PFA team of the uh, team of the year, which I find astonishing. Will he get in this year? Will Aguero get in that team ahead of Harry Kane or Mo Salah? Or, but I'd like to think so because you know he's been symptomatic of the success that Manchester City have, uh, have enjoyed. And probably, as a club, the man who scored the greatest goal or the most important yes, goal in, the, their, in their, their history. history. Yeah. And then Vincent Company, he said, on the back page of, I think it's on the back page of the mail, it says 41 injuries Vincent Company yeah. has, has had. Missed something like... 779 minutes or, or something like that it's, it's just it's amazing really to know that uh, somebody who's been there for the long haul is still looking sprightly and he's not exactly he's not exactly over the hill 32 he's, he's you know he's hardly in his dotage but it is a, as an indication of the depth of what manchester city have got so it was it was groundhog day for arsenal again but again um, the, first <laughs> again. Day, the first of many. Is that the one? Is yeah, the first of many. They're going to uh, really clean up, aren't they? This I, year? I, well, you know, they started off. They started off hoping for four. Now they obviously can't win the FA Cup. Uh, the first one is very important for mm. Pep to get under his belt. I think the league will follow pretty swiftly, um, uh, and then, well. The way they destroyed Basel the other day in the uh, in the Champions League would suggest that they, I would thought, are favourites for the Champions yes. League. I mean, you look at Barcelona against Chelsea; they yep. weren't the old Barcelona. No. Nope. Anyone looking at the the, the last t sixteen at the moment, which is going to be the last eight quite soon, well, PSG will be or, saying PSG or Real Madrid. I think. Think, uh, yeah. I, I, I think you know. I think City and Guardiola would fancy themselves against anybody left in the in the competition. So I think that's a, you know, I, I, I think that's an indication. If they win three trophies, okay, it's not the treble that Manchester United won in '99, but it's a treble. And I think to win three of the four competitions that you enter at the start of the season, I think is a tremendous achievement, and it will just underline exactly what Guardiola brings to what well, has brought to the English game he has everybody said oh you know he went to Bayern Munich and Bayern Munich won the treble under um, Heinkiss the previous manager and then they fell away oh and he only won two mm. okay only only only, only <laughs> one only one two what he does is, is he transforms players you know you look at the players that have improved under him you look Raheem at Raheem Sterling, Sterling right. exactly you know uh, Raheem Sterling is an incredible talent um, and when he was coached well at uh, Liverpool under Brendan Rodgers. You saw what a great player he, he, he was and, and, and will continue to be. But Guardiola's taken him to a new level. You look at, you know, he could score 20 goals a season. You know, this was, a, this, this was you know, they used to call him Jigsaw at Liverpool because he went and fell to pieces in the box. But the, 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 the bottom line is he just improves players. You know, Kevin De Bruyne was a great player when he came back um, into uh, English football from Germany. But Guardiola's taken in that next yeah. leap. You know, yeah. look at the, the way that David Silva, he didn't think that David Silva could get any better. But he's got better under Guardiola. I think that, the system that they play, I think is, is, is testament uh, to Guardiola's, now I hate to say genius because you're the genius, how, how do you define genius? But I, I, I guess if anybody is as close to that in terms of football coaching and, 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 and management, then it is Guardiola. And of course, what he's doing is throwing into sharp relief what's happening on the other side of Manchester. Jose, who's, you know, nothing to, to dismiss the fact they're second in the table and yep. they're 
really running away with a, a great season from what he's taken on, but yeah. it's all going the, the wrong way there, isn't it? Well, I it mean, says, a... I think, what was it? The Sun yesterday, Mike McGrath has done a story. More, a lot more. Possibly De Gea, new contract, but well, will, I, I think will Pogba I... stay? Well, I, I have to say, I, I, I'm with Mourinho on this one. I think it's for the player to fit into the system, not the system to fit around the player. Um, and I think Paul Bogba has still an awful lot to prove. I think the, 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 the jury's out. I, you know, at Juventus, yes, he was outstanding, and we know that he's an outstanding talent. There's no doubting his gifts. There's no doubting his ability. You know, his, his physical presence, his touch, his skill level is as is, is right up there. But it's that need to fit into a system and it's Mourinho's system I mean listen let's be fair Mourinho's systems have been fairly successful over the years at Chelsea at Porto at Real Madrid and basically everywhere he's gone yeah. he's won big trophies so you know the bottom line is and I, and I have to say fair play to Pogba yesterday um, again I watched the uh, I watched the match on the iPad um, on the train coming up from London um, and Pogba was very good yesterday. Yeah. He actually played very, very well in a system that gave him that little bit of freedom. And, you know, perhaps Mourinho has recognised that, you know, there has to be a bit of give and take. There's not always a lot of give and take with Jose. It's his way or, or no way. But but Pogba responded yesterday, as did um, Romelu Lukaku. Yeah. It was an outstanding centre-forwards. Uh, scored one, created one. Looked like the Lukaku that we've seen previously because the accusation was he was a flat track bully wasn't he exactly. doesn't, doesn't, score, score, doesn't score against the big six and has never scored against has never scored against Chelsea he did yesterday and he gave Chelsea a real run for their money yesterday and uh, and, and United actually without being um, completely dominant without playing that beautiful transcendental football that Manchester City play and sometimes Liverpool play and Tottenham play um, but they were very, very effective yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Very effective yesterday. Antonio Conte, his position is, is always every weekend we read about it, and it's not without foundation. No. There's got to be doubts about his future, isn't there? Long yeah, I think, think, I think, you know, after they lost to Watford, um, were taken apart by Watford on that, in the Monday night game, um, there were huge, huge question marks. Things have calmed down a little bit now. Um, you know, they've had some convincing wins. And I have to say, they played very well against Barcelona yeah. in um, in the Champions League at Stamford Bridge uh, last week. Yes, I think the questions will continue. Um, I think the doubts as to his longevity at Stamford Bridge will continue. But I think what they what Chelsea have shown and what they will do, and the noises coming from the top of the club are that you know we're not going to make a knee jerk reaction. This you know okay, we underst we understand there are doubts. And listen, Conte has been his own worst enemy really, just by continually sort of like digging away yeah. at the Chelsea yeah. hierarchy um, and you don't do that at Chelsea there's 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 an understanding that you know you know the structure of the club and if you come into that structure you know what your position is and nobody's saying oh you know he's got to doff his cap but he has to realize what the position is at Chelsea and that, that you know he is the head coach mm. and he's not there to run the transfer system and the recruitment strategy he's there to coach players to be better as Guardiola does um, and to help Chelsea win football matches. Now, one other point about Guardiola, I mean, he's winning all the plaudits, but he's obviously a little bit of um, controversy at the moment, the yep. yellow ribbon, the Catalan yep. support thing. Yep. I think, uh, is it Sam Wallace has done yeah, a little Sam line here, in the Telegraph? In, in the Telegraph, in his column. In his, the FA to in his, a bit of slack, really, on that one. Yeah, uh, that's the headline. Um, time for the FA to grant Pep some political independence. Um, I, I can't help but, uh, well... I can't help. I absolutely agree with um, Sam. Sam talks about the, the, the whole poppy situation. And I, I, I do think that the FA make a rod for their own back sometimes. Um, they love to claim the high moral ground. They come over all self-righteous when they want to wear a poppy on a shirt around the time of um, Remembrance Sunday. Um, and then, you know, everybody, well, you know, you have to agree with us. We're going to do it whatever we're, you know. Blah, blah. And they, they, they force you, A for FIFA, whoever, and they drag them along. Then, when, when Pep wants to show something, and, and let's, let's be fair, UEFA and FIFA did see the poppy as a political Yes, that was absolutely true, yeah. Um, and the FA are now saying, and, and ironically, you, um, you know, UEFA don't mind Pep wearing a, um, a yellow ribbon in support of... Um, it's not in support of Catalan um, freedom. No, it's, it's the political it's, prisoners. Isn't it's it? the political yeah. prisoners who have been. I think there's four um, 
pro-Catalan um, politicians who've been in jail. Uh, they've been jailed without trial, mm. um, and that's the the protest that he's making. It's a it's, if you, if you take it down to its lowest. The, the base level, it's a political statement, as is the poppy. The poppy is a political statement in the, in the eyes of the authorities. So the FA want it one way and then they want to hammer Guardiola. I was glad to see him wearing it yesterday. I was gl very glad to see um, thousands of Manchester City fans in the stadium at, at Wembley all wearing the, the yellow ribbon in support of their manager who is uh, supporting the, 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 the jailed Catalan politicians. And I think it's about time that the FA sort of said, OK, this, this is not, is, 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 you know, is he having any kind of impact whatsoever on, on football wearing this ribbon? No, of course he's not. So, listen, they're going to find him, I'm sure. They're going to ask for his, I, I think he's been, the story was that he's actually been asked on several occasions and warned on several occasions and he's gone on to wear it. And he spoke yesterday in his press conference, post-match press conference, about the fact that he's going to continue wearing it and you know if they find him if they suspend him if they ban him so be it it's not going to deter him the question that was asked however um in the press conference yesterday was how does you because you pay tribute to obviously um manchester city's abu dhabi owners um how does that freedom of speech yes tailor or tie with or how does it correlate to the um lack of freedom of speech in Abu Dhabi. And he, answer, and he answered that quite well as well. He said, you know, that's for you know, others to make their decision. He said, I am wearing this in support of, uh, you know, uh, the, the four guys who have been jailed. Fantastic, Paul. Another great event in, uh, in the North East. Absolutely. FWA events, regional, very important that we cover, yeah. cover all the bases. Yeah, and huge, we're, huge. We're not just a, a London-based no, organisation, are we? I think that's the, that's the point that we're trying to make. You know, the, we're in Manchester, in the North East here in Durham, um, in the Midlands. And a life membership for Ray Robertson. A life membership what for Ray Robertson. Great members, uh, it, yeah, and again, to see the warmth in the room for Ray, who, is, um, who has been um, Mr Middlesbrough. Yeah. Um, ex players talking about him. Yeah. Way, you know. Yeah. And he was, I have to say, when I was a young pup reporter, and Paddy Barkley, our chairman, made the point that when he came up to the Northeast for the first time, Ray was so kind and um, and he was interested and he was helpful. And made him feel at home. He, absolutely. And I, yeah. I, and I think that is, that's as much as you can ask for, uh, you know, and I was very. Very fortunate to be given a life membership. I look at what Ray has achieved over the years and I think, mm, perhaps I got that a bit early. <laughs> Brilliant. Great stuff. Thanks. Paul, Cheers, Joe. Always good. Take care.